what's better, a trekking pole tent or a freestanding tent? What if the answer is neither or something in between? That's where semi-freestanding tents come in. All the benefits of freestanding tents, but with almost half the weight. And today we're comparing six of them to find out which one is the best for you. So let's check it out. First, what even is a semi-freestanding tent? Well, it's a tent that can mostly stand up on its own without stakes, but needs at least two stakes, typically on the back corners, to be completely pitched. Semi-freestanding tents are designed this way to give you most of the benefits of freestanding tents while saving weight by using stakes instead of poles on the back two corners. And semi-freestanding tents have historically been some of my favorite tents to take backpacking because they are lightweight, they're double walled, and they're well designed, but they don't all excel in the same area. So let's look at some of the differences. Since one of the main benefits of a semi-freestanding tent is the weight savings, let's start with the absolute lightest tent on this list, the Nemo Hornet Elite. This tent comes in at just two pounds and one ounce, and is a full four ounces lighter than the next lightest tent on this list. This was my go-to tent for years and still holds a special place in my heart. I used the old orange nylon version before it was updated to use Nemo's proprietary Osmo fabric, which is a blend of nylon and polyester fabric, giving exceptional strength with very little stretch when wet. Like I said, I love this tent, but beyond its lightweight and hybrid fabric, the Nemo Hornet Elite doesn't have much else to offer. It is the most expensive tent on this list at $650, a full $100 more expensive than the next most expensive tent. It has very little headroom with the shortest crossbar out of any of these tents, only eight inches across. And while it can accommodate two people that's only with 20 inch wide pads instead of my preferred 25 inch wide pads. But if saving weight is your highest priority, it's a solid tent that served me well for years. So from the most expensive to the least, the Marmot Super Alloy comes in at $430. Still a lot of money for a tent, but these are all name brand ultralight tents. For your hard earned cash, you're gonna get a tent that weighs two pounds and 11 ounces, which is on the heavier side for a semi freestanding tent, but it's not the heaviest. It also offers one of the wider crossbars giving near vertical walls on the inside. But just like the Nemo, this tent won't accept two wide pads, so you're probably still only going to be using it for just one person. Something unique about this tent is it's backwards from most of the other tents. Almost all the other tents have poles holding out the front two corners and stakes on the back, but this tent has poles on the back and stakes on the front. This normally would affect headroom in the tent by moving the yoke to the back instead of the front where it is usually, but with this tent, the nice long crossbar seems to help with eliminating the need for the high yoke on the front. But for just $20 more and a total of $450, you get one of the best made tents on this list, the Big Agnes Tiger Wall. This tent has the best headroom out of any of the tents that I tested with a crossbar that measured 33 inches across, giving near vertical walls. It comes in at just two pounds, eight ounces, and has this huge mesh pocket that spans the entire width of this tent. Most of the tents on this list give you these measly little pockets that can hold a phone and maybe a beanie, but the Tiger Wall, you can shove whole jackets up in the mesh pocket, keeping them off the floor. I really wish more tents would include pockets like this. It's little things like that that make the Tiger Wall feel high quality. But just like the others, you still can't get two wide pads in here, so it's still only good for one person or it's going to feel cramped with two. Now before we keep talking about tents, I want to talk about something that's actually really important to me. For the last 17 months, Moose Jaw has been the primary sponsor of this channel. And I know that some of you just don't care who sponsors my videos, but without Moose Jaw, this channel wouldn't be possible. They, along with all my other sponsors, allow me to do this full time. They allow me to travel to destinations to test gear. They allow me to purchase the gear that I need to test these videos. They put food on my family's table and a roof over their heads. When I say I couldn't do this without Moose Jaw, I mean it. Not only is Moose Jaw awesome in that way, but they're just a really fun company. They're trying at every turn to make you laugh or maybe at least just cringe at some of their dad jokes. And they have some really great benefits like 10% back off of purchases that is immediately available for your next purchase. No waiting till the spring to cash in a dividend. And just because you're a viewer of this channel, you can get an additional 10% off by using the code MLOMJ. That stands for My Life Outdoors and Moose Jaw. If you haven't checked them out, go check them out through the links in the description or at moosejaw.com and help support a company that is helping support me. Now, 
back to the tents. Let's talk about the tent that has the most features, the Sea to Summit Alto TR2. This tent was really thinking out of the box with these wide tension crossbars that hold the walls out straight and taut. Big peak vents that help keep condensation to a minimum and interesting features like the split stuff sacks that convert to pockets on the inside of the tent and the pull bag that converts to a light bar. None of the other tents on this list have features like this and at first they might seem kind of gimmicky, but the light bar really does a great job of of lighting up the tent at night. Now, you still have to use your headlamp to produce the light, but it really does make a huge difference by spreading out and diffusing that light. But all these extra features come at a price, $550 and two pounds, 15.3 ounces of weight. That's the second most expensive tent and the heaviest on this list. And it still can't accommodate two wide pads, which means you can't even get a friend to help share the load unless you're both okay with 20 inch wide pads. If they made this a 50 inch wide floor, it would probably be the best tent on the list. Oh, and I should probably mention that this tent did snap a pole in a gusty windstorm the very first time I ever used it. My tent pole snapped in the middle of the night. Your tent pole snapped? My tent pole snapped in the middle of the night. Which one? Come here, come look at this. The only tent I've ever had break in the field, but Sea to Summit did repair it free of charge. Now, if you want a tent that can really accommodate two people, then you have to go with the Mountain Hardware Strato. This is the only tent on this list that has a wide enough floor to accept two wide pads, 50 inches from head to foot. It doesn't have as wide of a crossbar as some of the other tents, which means you take a slight hit in the headroom, but it's not bad. And if you're really wanting a tent for two, those wide pads make a bigger difference than the headroom. I also really like the white fly. It gives a nice even lighting during the daytime that is easy on the eyes. It comes in at $480 and two pounds, nine ounces, which is right in the middle for both price and weight. The only complaint I have with this tent is the saggy fly. It just never feels like you're going to get it taut and only gets worse when it gets wet. And out of all the tents on this list, it's the one that I would grab when planning a trip for whatever that's worth. Unlike the last tent on our list, the MSR Freelight, I've talked about this tent many times before. It's the tent I love to hate, and for good reason. Anytime this tent gets wet, you're almost certain to get water on the inside of your tent due to the way the fly is designed. All the other tents have flies that open from the middle, but the free light opens from the side. When it's dry, it's a nice feature that prevents you from folding yourself in half to open the fly, but when it's wet, the side cut zipper positions the fly opening directly above the tent floor, allowing water to pour in as soon as you open it. It's a really unfortunate design because this is the only other tent that has a 50 inch wide floor that theoretically should accept two wide pads, but in my experience, two 25 inch wide pads don't really fit without stretching the floor and putting stress on the seams. Combine that with a small detached crossbar that's easy to lose and minimizes headroom, as well as the unfortunate color scheme, and it really is the worst tent on this list. All right, so there you have it, six semi-freestanding tents. Which one is the best for you? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like this style of video where I compare several different tents to let you know which one is the best, go check out this video right here. Please like, subscribe, and do all those other things. And as always, thanks for watching.